so I wanted to film another tutorial for you and this is the eye look from my September favorites which a few of you asked about and asked which colors I used or if I could do a tutorial on it so I am and it also is kind of a review and demo of the Paula's Choice Nude Mattes palette so there's 12 colors in here 11 of them are matte because they did very kindly add in a highlight shade, which I think is awesome because whether you like to have very matte eyes or not, it is always nice to have a little bit of a um, shimmer highlight just below the brow or in the corner if you want to, because sometimes you're gonna feel like that. And it also layers over other colors really well, so if you wanna kind of add a little bit of a sheen over different colors, then that works really well too. So it is just a kind of hard cardboard palette, so it is very light. The magnet on it isn't crazy strong, but I think it would be fine for travel because chances are you're going to have it packed in with a ton of other stuff anyway. Um, and then it does come inside of this kind of sleeve, but I usually throw those away. I was looking for kind of vegan palettes and this is one that I found online, so I wanted to definitely try it. I've been really impressed with the color range as well as the kind of color payoff, the texture of them, everything has been really good so far, very easy to work with. So even if you're just starting out, I think this would be a really great palette. I can't remember what the price was, but I'll, you know, list it as usual. So yeah, if you want to see me create this eye look from this palette, and I also did my brows, then just keep on watching. So I've pretty much done the rest of my face, but I do need to do my brows. And because I am kind of reviewing this palette, I wanted to use one of these shadows um, as a brow color. I'm just going to brush my brows into place first with just one of these e.l.f. Uh, spoolies. And then taking the Zoeva 317 Wing Liner Brush, I'm going to take this color Cafe Ole, which is this one. So obviously I kind of whizzed through the brows a bit, but I do have an updated brow routine video that I'll link below if you want to watch that. Um, obviously this is an eyeshadow and it's not really formulated for brows, but it does work quite well. It's kind of similar to the Inglot Eyebrow Powders. But you do have to kind of keep getting more and more and more on your brush to kind of build up any color because, again, it's not for brows. But I just wanted to show you how kind of versatile the colors are. So to highlight under my brows, I'm going to take the Cosette D225 brush and the color Beige from the Nude Mattes palette. I'm then going to use the same brush and take a little bit of the color Cream. And I'm going to concentrate that in the arch and also kind of on this inner corner area just to kind of brighten it up and bring that area forward and then just taking a clean blending brush this one is from morphe i'm just going to kind of swipe that around to uh, blend those two colors in i'm then going to use that same blending brush and the color tan from the palette i'm just going to run that through the crease of the transition color and I actually really like this color in the crease. I think it's really pretty and it blends really well, especially for the pale people like me. And if you had more of a kind of red blonde hair, you could probably even use this on your eyebrows for the strawberry blondies out there. Taking the Cosette D220 brush, I'm going to take that same color and just run it under my lash line. Now pretty much all I do is I take deeper and deeper colors to kind of warm up that crease area. So I'm going to use the small OCC blender brush and that next color along chestnut. And I'm keeping all of these kind of crease colors very warm and it will kind of make sense maybe later. So then just adding a little bit more definition. I'm not blending this out as much. And then each time I add a darker color, I like to just run a little bit underneath the lash line, but not take it in quite as far. So the same thing again, but this time I'm using a chocolate truffle from the palette. And again, each time I don't bring the darker colors quite as far in along here or underneath, but just to kind of really add a lot of depth to this outer corner. And just get a little bit lighter with your hand each time you go darker too. It makes blending out a little bit easier. This 
So same again, but with coffee this time. And then taking that bigger blending brush again, I'm just going to kind of run that over there. And I'm not adding any additional eyeshadow, I'm just working with what's already on the brush or on my face. Going back in with coffee again and that small blending brush from OCC. I'm going to start bringing that in further towards the iris. And I'm using this brush over a um, kind of regular eyeshadow brush just because the shape is a little bit easier to get into there with but you can still kind of pack the color on with it. I'm going to do the same again with chocolate truffle and this time bringing it just about to the middle of my iris. So generally I don't like to use a lot of grey eyeshadows. Um, they can kind of be a little bit strangely complementary to green eyes sometimes I think but if you have any kind of pinky tones in your skin it can really bring them out. So the reason that I like to do the warmer um, tones around the outside is so that then I can put the grey in the middle and it just creates this kind of nice mix of tones. I don't really know how to explain it but I really like it. So on a small shader from OCC I'm going to take Gunmetal Grey and this is probably the only grey I've ever truly liked. So, And I start by applying that over the... Uh, warmer color a little bit. And somehow this kind of cool gray and the warm browns really mix in nicely together. Because I do like grays, I just don't always think they're the most complementary to my skin. And just make sure that you're bringing that all the way up to the dark crease colors you put down. So now I like to do a little bit of cleanup. So I'm gonna take that D225 from Cosette again and then beige, which is the more yellow tone of the paler colors. I'm just gonna use that to clean up any mess in here, just because I like to keep that area kind of crisp even when I do do a smoky eye. I just think it keeps your eyes looking brighter and smoky at the same time. And then taking that blending brush again, not putting anything extra on it, just run that through the crease and make sure that gray and the browns are all nicely mixed together. And that same Cosette brush again, I'm going to take cream and just put that on that inner amount of eye. <laughs> uh, not quite a third, maybe a quarter. And just kind of pack it on at first to get that highlight where you want it. And I'm going to put a little bit underneath here too. This is actually a really nice kind of eggshell colour, I really like the consistency of it. And then with a small shader that you use for the grey, just very gently kind of buff the grey into that cream colour. And then although this is a matte palette, they have very kindly put a highlight colour in it, which is Pink Sugar. I'm just going to take a little bit on that Cosette brush again and just press it right underneath the arch just to catch the light when you kind of turn your head a little bit and I'm just going to put a little bit really close into the tear duct but I actually quite like this being a very matte look so I'm not putting too much at all so for the eyeshadows that's pretty much it I'm going to go ahead and apply a little bit of a liquid eyeliner just enough so that I can wear lashes and I'm going to use the Charlotte Tilbury Feline Flick Pen to do that and I really am just going to trace along my lash line, not taking it any further out. Just enough so that I can put some lashes on. I probably should clarify, the reason um, I like to use eyeliner on my top lashes when I'm wearing lashes is because it kind of hides the band of the lashes a little bit, especially if they have a very thick band. Um, what can sometimes happen is you can see that there's like gaps between your lashes and then an obvious lash on top, whereas when you have a little bit of eyeliner it just kind of all blends in a little bit better. 
especially if you have very blonde eyelashes. Uh, so yeah, that's why I do that. So now the liner is done, I'm going to apply some mascara and I'm going to use the Charlotte Tilbury Full Fat Lashes. One of the reasons I like to look down into the mirror when I apply my mascara is that that way your eyelashes are less likely to touch this area up here and transfer. So that is why I do that. And to get to those inner lashes, I just pull my eye from the outside and that kind of exposes them and means you can coat them nicely. So you could leave it here if you wanted to, but I'm going to add some lashes just because I think it kind of finishes the look off a little bit. So I have been wearing my Georgie lashes a lot lately, but I kind of wanted to show you something different. Chances are if you're watching my channel, it has something to do with the fact that you kind of like more well, cruelty-free um, beauty products. So one thing that is very popular, sadly, are mink lashes. And as much as you might be told that the mink are treated well and... They just, you know, take the mink in their loving arms and brush them and then they remove the hairs from the brush and make them into lashes. That's most likely not what happens. There was a kind of recent scandal with Angora fur, which is rabbit fur, and the same thing applied. People were told that it was humanely harvested from the animal, but really what they do is every three months, rip the hair from the rabbit and chuck the rabbit back in its cage to regrow that hair and the rabbits will scream when it happens like it's horrible anyway so because mink lashes are so popular because people are like oh but they look so much more natural well that's because they belong to someone else one thing I have found which is a very good um, kind of dupe I guess for mink lashes are these kiss lashes and a lot of brands have now come out with lashes that have more kind of tapered ends because that is what kind of sets the natural and synthetic lashes apart is that the natural ones obviously look more natural because the hairs are tapered at the ends, they're not cut straight like some synthetic lashes are. So these are a really great option if you are a mink lash addict or if you like the look of them. So the ones I'm going to be using aren't actually this type but they are the same kind of thing. So they're just kind of, I don't know, they're just very slightly different, but I just wanted to show you the box so you know which ones to look for. So they're the Kiss uh, Look So Natural ones. And although I'm not using Georgie lashes, I am gonna use their glue because it's amazing. So I'm gonna use tweezers to apply these because I've got uh, long nails right now. So again, I just look down at a mirror, kind of come at my eye from above and just place it right up against the lash line. Take the outside, put that where it belongs, and then again I just pull my eye outwards and stick the inside part in. These lashes are also great for a more kind of natural eye look, um, so if you don't want to wear too much eyeshadow or eyeliner they're really great too. I would still say to put enough eyeliner on that you're at least covering your lash line, it could just be very thin. But um, these are so natural and kind of fine at the ends, you can get away with wearing them with not much other eye makeup and it just looks really nice. So as usual for my lips, I'm going to do a little bit of a cocktail. So first of all, I'm going to take this teeny weeny hourglass lip colour, I think it's like a liquid lipstick, in canvas. I'm then going to outline that with the Trick uh, Cosmetic Colouring Pencil from OCC. And I am just concentrating most of that colour around here and here. I'm not so much touching this area. And then once I've done that, I am just going to take this little uh, small smudge brush from e.l.f. and just kind of blend that in a little bit. And then lastly, I am taking Undressed Lip Gloss from Dose of Colour. And just blending that in on my finger. So that, my friends, is about it, I think. Hopefully I managed to recreate that same kind of eye look that I had on in my 
September favourites video. Essentially this is it, just with that very warm crease and a kind of cool grey lid. I think this would work on a lot of different eye colours to be honest, because you do have the kind of warm and the cool in there, so it's going to kind of pull different colours out of your eyes. So yeah, I have been enjoying filming tutorials for you a little bit more lately, I hope you guys have been liking it too. Um, so if you have any requests or if there's any kind of looks you want to see me recreate, like things that are popular right now or things you've seen from like fashion week or fashion month, then just let me know and um, I'll see you next time. Bye.